All right, the 450 podium. Start with a third place finish with his first podium. The RCH Yoshimir Suzuki, Brock Tickle. And second on the night, Red Bull's KTM, uh, Red Bull KTM's Ryan Dungey. And your winner, Monster Energy Kawasaki's Eli Tomac. Brock, congratulations. Um, as far as the main event itself goes, you rode most of it alone. What were you thinking for about a 15 minute block there where you're pretty much gap in front of you, gap behind you, all by yourself? What was going through your mind? Yeah, you know, I just needed, I needed to focus on myself and I knew that. I mean, I've been doing this uh, for a while now, but um, yeah, I got off to a good start and knew I just needed to put in the laps I needed to. And the track was tough tonight. Uh, it was all about hitting your lines, jumping the jumps and uh, staying smooth. and. Uh, not panicking. So uh, for me, that's all I tried to focus on, and uh, it worked out. Uh, Ryan got around me, I think, five or six laps to go, and that honestly helped me a little bit get back in a little groove because I kind of tightened up there at the end. Ryan, a pretty hard fought second place. Uh, tough start there. I think you might have had to pass almost everybody tonight. Yeah. Early in the main event, was there a time when you were kind of in that cluster of guys that you had any kind of concern just based on the environment you found yourself in? Um, I think the only thing that ran through my head was um, obviously not to get ahead of myself and just, just try to pick off as many guys as I can. And um, I, I, had, I did not think I'd get to second by any means. You know, I, I was looking at it, I was like, man, this, it, but I just tried to, put, put, you know, try to keep hitting my marks, not make any big mistakes. And I didn't, you know, for, for the most part, I hit my lines good I, I, I rode good I felt and, and the bike felt good as well track really went um, deteriorated pretty fast but uh, you know before I knew it I found myself in fifth and then there was Baggett and a couple guys made mistakes and then there was Tickle and so I just it, it was nice to be able to I was really happy with the night and the ride it just would have been a little bit the start I, I wish I was was there and um, you know to be up there with Eli and, and, and given a good race so but overall good night <clears throat> Eli, congrats on the win. Good start. Got out front pretty early. Is there any point during the main event at all where you knew where Ryan was or were or glancing over to check in on his progress as he made his way through the field? Yeah, I I try to keep it out if I can. I mean, uh, you know, there's there's certain points where, yeah, you want to do your thing. But, uh, you know, it is good to, to eye guys and see where they're at um, just so you kind of know what kind of pace you can push if you if you can if you can raise the pace or, or not or you know just to manage so um, you know I was just just trying to manage a, a good safe lead and, and get through the night because uh, once again that was that was a gnarly track. All right, let's open it up. Michael Antonovich with Transworld Motocross. This is for Brock. Around this point every year, you build and build and build, and we hit this point, and you hit your best point. Is that? everything just kind of falls into stride. Is that coincidence, do you feel, or do you think you have to build and figure everything out over those first few weeks? I mean, obviously, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say that's true, but, I mean, it seems to happen. Uh, I had the best off season I've ever had and put in a lot of work with the team and made a lot of progress for myself and, and the bike. So I felt like we came into A1, like, ready, and I didn't want to put pressure on myself, but I feel like I could be up here. I know a lot of guys are hurt right now, but I feel like it's realistic for myself to believe I should be up here. So for me, it was a struggle, obviously, until now. But I mean, the start is where I've been slacking and tonight. And tonight I did all three starts and I was there. So just got to keep that going and uh, stay focused on myself and hit my marks every, every single time I go to the track because I have the speed and I can do it, I feel like. And every weekend it's going to be a little different, this guy's track or this guy's track. So. It uh, just depends on uh, how you feel on the weekend and taking advantage of it. Chris and Slack, Motocross Performance Magazine, uh, question for Brock as well. There was uh, some talk towards the end of last season or end of outdoors, kind of maybe RCH, maybe not as a team, that the team might not, not be around this year. Um, so what does it mean to you, though, to, to get your career best finished with this team that has stuck by you for 
for a good number of years now. Yeah, no, I've been with the team ever since uh, they started, so it's been awesome. We've made progress every year, and uh, it's been really good. I got I got two podiums last year in outdoors, and that was that was awesome. And then I got hurt, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I mean the whole off season, like I said, it was the best we've ever had as a team. And we put in a lot of work, and finally now it's showing, and stoked and happy to be where I'm at. Uh, Brad Gebhardt, Big MX Radio. Uh, Eli and, and Ryan, uh, the race to the, the pole position was kind of dependent on that quad in the middle of that long rhythm section. Um, and then during the main event, depended on not jumping that and being smart about it. Take us through that a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, I guess uh, for me, and I never did it in the main event, actually, the quad. Um, you know, I saw what uh, Savachi did. I seen where I was at. I felt like, you know, when I was, I was catching the guys, I was like, I'm, I'm gaining enough time on these guys to, to get to second, I see, by now. And then, you know, it, it just was so rutted. It, it wasn't worth it for me, I thought. But uh, I guess I don't know what, I didn't see what Eli was doing. But I tried to more hit the consistent line than, than chance it. You know, I, th I felt like it was kind of a big risk to do it in, in the main. Yeah, in, in the main, it, it was it was broke down. And uh, shoot, I, I think I did it once or twice, and that was about it. Um, you know, there was even some times where I was literally doubling through that whole section because uh, even <clears throat> the jump before that, just getting over the tabletop and landing a double, you know, if you overshot it, you'd land in the ruts. And I even had to spill there in practice. So um, that that was a tough one. You know, it seems like if you could get to that that quad, you know, you could it was there. It was almost tougher to uh, to do the the double and the triple before it. Yeah. Jim Holly, Race Day Live. I want to ask you, this question is for Ryan Dungey and Eli Tomac, both of you. We see each and every weekend different starts from you guys. Uh, Ryan got the start last week, and this week you were know, mid-pack. The weekend before, we saw the same thing from Eli. I'm just wondering what you guys are doing different. I don't see the consistency that I've seen before. Yeah, I don't, I, for me, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, Dallas wasn't a great start, and neither was tonight. Last week was good. Um, you know, I, on the gate, you know, I could, you know, you, you, you see all the, uh, where everybody's at, who's got a good line. Uh, Eli's was, was, had a really good gate for sure. And, and so did I. I went inside a little bit more than I expected and, or wanted to, but I was like at the gate, the, after the gate, it was better. And I knew I had to get the power to the ground, and, and I did, and I, I, I got too far forward, and, and I spun. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, I mean, it, the things are happening so quick, and it's more instinct than it is actually like, taking yourself through it. It's kind of what you taught yourself to do and just a little too much clutch, a little too much weight forward can, and, it, and you know, sadly it's the difference from uh, a whole shot and, you know, and, and way back in the pack, you know, so yeah, they've been a little inconsistent, so I'll try to clean those up for sure. But, uh, <clears throat> go ahead. Um, yeah, going to the star, I mean, y you know, it, some of it can just be from your qualifying times and your heat races. If you get that, you know, that good gate pick for the rut, uh, you know, and then and then after that, you got to go out there and just execute the start and do it. So um, it, it's tough, you know. Uh, it's, yeah, so sometimes it doesn't matter if you, you know, win your heat race, or sometimes it, it, it does matter, you know, because a lot of those gates will be messed up. Brad Gebhardt, Big MX Radio. This question's for Brock Tickle. Brock, uh, sitting in second place, probably a lot of things to think about while you're there by yourself. And uh, up comes uh, the, the number one machine. What was going through your head there when you had, you had about five seconds on the guy? You know, I was trying to focus on myself and hit the lines that I needed to. I felt like in certain areas of the track, I was pretty good. And then other areas of the track, I kind of struggled. And like I said, I knew, I saw, I saw Blake too behind him, so I knew I needed to go if he was going to get around me. And Ryan made the pass down the mechanics area. And it honestly, like I said, helped me get into flow. I've catched on, caught on to some of his lines. And uh, yeah, it helped me there finish out, the, finish out the main and not struggle where I was struggling earlier. Uh, Chase Dallow, Racer X, this is for all three. Uh, entering the weekend, I think five of eight rounds, uh, the leader, eventual winner has led every lap. Are starts more important this year? And if so, why? I would say starts are, I mean, yes, they're important. Um, it, I, I don't know. It's just the class is so competitive. If a guy does get a whole shot, you know, and you're stuck in eighth or ninth, you know, he can make the run away, and he's got 10 seconds on you, you know, before halfway, and, and a lot of times it's, it's over by then. So um, 
yeah, I would say because it's so competitive, you can't just literally go through everyone and expect to make the run to the front. So um, I would just say it's everyone's so fast and so good now. It's, it's tough to do it. Yeah, I would agree. And um, just being able to get up front and hit your lines, hit your marks, not not have anybody in front of you to you know to 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 get roosted or sprayed. So it's just you just get out front and go, and and that's that's the best scenario. So. I mean, you can look at results from last week and you can answer that yourself. I feel like last week I rode the worst I rode just because I got a bad start. I mean, I got 14th and I tried. And tonight I get a good start and I put myself in a position to ride like myself. And that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. I mean, all of us from, I think, qualifying, I don't know about tonight, but every weekend from third, fourth to 14th is one second. So that on the track is if you're out front running running like I was tonight, it's easy. But if you're in the back worrying about the guy behind you, the guy in front of you trying to pass this guy, trying to pass that guy, you can't really do what you want to. So uh, definitely it was a lot easier to get up front and uh, put in some laps that uh, I felt like I was comfortable doing. All right, guys, thank you and congratulations. Thank you.